In Leicester, the council provides over 22,000 council properties for the community. Like cities all over the UK, if a council tenant dies with no immediate sign of relatives, the council has a responsibility to offer what's known as a welfare funeral. Before a property can be cleared, it's environmental health officer Steve and Alison's job to go into the flat and try and find any evidence of next of kin, but most importantly, of evidence of any assets which the council can sell to recoup the cost of the funeral. We're at a flat where a gentleman's been found dead. No relatives came forward, so we've come today to have a look through the property, see if we can find any addresses or names or anybody who might want to be involved in a funeral. If we find any evidence of any bank accounts or money, then we are able to recover some of our costs. I mean, this looks like he might have either dealed in antiques or bric-a-brac. Some pictures there, might be a Picasso. <laughs> or maybe not. For Stephen Allison, there's always the potential of making some gruesome discoveries, as the only people normally to have entered the property are the police to clear away the body. On entering the bedroom, it's obvious that this is where the old man died. We've come into the bedroom now and uh, there's a definite, uh, there's a different smell in this room the rest, uh, from the rest of the flat. So we know he was found in here and you can certainly tell that from, from the smell. The distressing sight of the body fluids on the bed are something that Alison, alas, is all too used to. This isn't particularly bad at all. We've seen, seen a lot, lot worse than this. Sadly, you know, it's not unusual to find money under mattresses. So, yeah, we'll have a look under here. Make sure there's not a stash of money under there. On this occasion, there's no stash under the mattress. Alison and Steve will have to look further into the man's affairs if they're going to get a result. Steve and Alison are still sifting through a dead man's flat who passed away seemingly with no relatives. Consequently, the council has had to pay for a welfare funeral. Before they can have the flat cleared out, they're looking for any clues to the man's assets so they can reclaim the cost of the funeral. In doing so, they get a pretty good picture of how the man lived. He's obviously interested in antiques and he's got quite a few knick-knacks around, um, which is quite unusual actually. A lot of these places, there's nothing. There's not a picture, an ornament, a book or anything. You know, he eats his food out of the saucepan. It doesn't, you know, it's a very almost like student lifestyle. Quite often you find a pornography collection. <laughs> Haven't found that here, but it's not unusual to, to find that. We tend to throw that stuff away and we kind of try and save people's sort of embarrassment really. There are on average over 40 welfare funerals a year for Alison and Steve to deal with. So they've seen it all before, but there are still emotionally very sensitive issues for them when trying to trace relatives who are probably unaware of what has happened to their loved ones. I think the worst bit for me is when you, when you find a scrap of paper in somebody's wallet with a name on and you don't know what relation that person is mm. to the person who's mm. died and you've got to ring them up and say, excuse me, um, do you know this gentleman this, or this lady who's died? You know, and suddenly they might just say, oh yeah, that's my, that's my brother or that's my son, you know, whatever. And it, it, that's, that could be a bit difficult. You don't know who's going to be on the other end of the phone and what you're going to have to tell them. Even though they've built up a personal profile of the dead man, there's still no sign of any relatives or for that matter, any paperwork that might reveal some assets. What we haven't found at the moment is, is a wallet or, or any file with any really personal documents in it. Um, and we haven't found a file you know, with a birth certificate, marriage certificate, relative death certificates, which you might expect. The search continues for environmental health officers Alison and Steve, who are trying to find any evidence of relatives to contact to alert them to the tenant's demise. But still, it seems futile. We still haven't found um, any evidence of any um, close relatives. But at the moment, um, nobody. Just him and his um, antiques. They're also having no luck on finding any assets that the man might have had to pay for the welfare funeral. A welfare funeral costs the council on average a thousand pounds so any contribution would help. Suddenly though Steve might have a breakthrough. We've got two car keys so we'll have a look outside um, in the car park and see um, if we can find a Volvo and a 
forward that these keys fit. If they're in running order, we could send them to auction. That might help towards the cost of the funeral. That will be the Ford. The Ford is easy to locate in the car park outside, complete with a few parking tickets. It's quite an old car, but it looks in good condition. Yeah, we might get a couple of hundred pounds for it. On closer inspection of the boot, Steve finds some documents that could lead them to the Volvo. Volvo 740 GLE Estate. With a quick look round the surrounding area, the Volvo is still proving elusive, but now they've got the registration number, it should be easy to trace. Finally, quite a productive end to a rather frustrating day. Disappointing that we haven't found any relatives. That, that would have been nice. We've got enough now to uh, certainly try and recover some of the costs and obviously um, in the absence of any relatives we'll, we'll just get on and deal with the estate and make sure that everything's tied up and there aren't any loose ends.